right. Welcome back to the Kirby on Sports podcast YouTube page. A big thanks to our sponsors, as always, PM Plus Reserves, Shenandoah Primitives, Dr. Dave Leadership Corporation, Mark Francis with Icon Real Estate. Without our sponsors, none of this content would be made possible. So we thank you so much to our sponsors. Um, have a very special guest, my first time on the mic in quite a while. And I was looking for a unique interview, just, uh, you know, reaching out to a lot of people. And this one person in particular reached out and said, let's do it. So I have with me a graduate pitcher for the Ohio State University, Lexi Hanley, who has been killing it in the circle so far. Lexi, thank you so much for being with us. I know the schedule is pretty busy getting into postseason action um, in the softball world, but how are you? How are things going? Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Um, I'm good. We are. Uh, we just finished up the Big Ten tournament, had a good little run there last week, and yeah, we're heading down to Knoxville this week to see um, what the Bucks are made of. Absolutely. So, I mean, first and foremost, how I usually start these, basically, how, how'd you get into softball? What sort of, what was that thing like, I'm going to continue to play softball? What led you to this point today? Sure. Yeah. So um, I started playing um, t-ball like a lot of kids do. I think I was four years old. Um, and, you know, it's just something to do, something for my parents to get me out of the house, co-ed t-ball team, you know, the local rec uh, organization down, you know, down the street, um, and started that, um, went up to coach pitch. Um, my dad coached me throughout pretty much my whole youth, um, and then when I was eight years old, um, I remember I was playing for a team called the Dolphins, um, and then the Wildcats, and so they needed somebody to pitch. They needed someone to start learning how to pitch, because in softball, um, 10 you so nine and 10 year olds that's when you start um, kid pitch and so the coach had asked us just like at the end of a practice one day like and I remember I hadn't ever talked to my parents about it um, but I just put my hand up like I knew I wanted to pitch so um, I took it from there my parents found a great pitching instructor um, Diana Lynch who's my first pitching coach and um, went to a couple other ones throughout my career Ron Rex um, is the one who really has taught me a lot over my career. He's one of the great, uh, great influencers in my life, a great man. And um, yeah, so I've started pitching when I was eight years old and um, have had my ups and downs with it. But I think when I was like around 12 or 13, I really realized that like, man, this is fun. Like this is something I want to do for a long time. And high school came around and, you know, kind of figured it out. I, I also played basketball. So I actually wanted to be a college basketball player. Um, and it really wasn't until like my sophomore year of high school that I was like, mm, I think softball might be the route for me. I think pitching is what I want to do for a long time. So yeah, that's my story in a nutshell. Yeah, very great. And I, it seems like this season has been one of your highs. Most recently, the newest record holder for season, single season strikeouts with 241. That What an accomplishment, first and foremost. So congratulations on that. Once you hit that milestone, what was that like? What were your emotions like that you broke a school record with the most single season strikeouts? Um, honestly, I didn't know uh, that I broke it. We were at Maryland um, and it had been kind of a crazy weekend with rain and with weather. Um, we had gotten like, like two inches of rain on the field and we were just lucky to play. So, um, you know, I think that was game one. I pitched game one and, um, you know, we wanted to come out of there with two wins to kind of bump us up a couple places in the big 10 seedings for that tournament um, the following weekend. So, um, you know, I, I knew I was close, but it wasn't something that I was really banking on. And uh, I honestly like it was just another another strikeout, another inning, another, you know, big celebration. And then it was, you know, hey, let's go back to the dugout, do a couple more runs on the board. So um, not like a super, super, you know, Disney classic story. But uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that mindset. I mean, it's great that you broke a record, but it, it's back to business because you got to you have to pitch and you have to pitch your team to a win essentially so i like that so um in a nutshell lexi before we get into um kurt Avets here with um anything ohio state softball in a nutshell um how, how'd the regular season go for um you and your team um um obviously i've 
caught you, seldomly I've watched a couple games. Y'all look pretty darn good, but in your words, um, how'd the regular season go for you as a whole? Yeah, I am very, very, very impressed and very um, appreciative of this season. I think we had a lot of big chances to um, that we could either rise to or fall to. And I think for the most part, I mean, our offense is clicking at the right times. Our defense has looked great recently. Our pitching staff is getting it all together. So, you know, we've had some big wins against teams like Kentucky and South Carolina, um, USF. Um, we've, we've just been able to really create such a great um, season because we get along so well. So, um, yeah, I'm really, really impressed with these girls and this, this group of people who I get to go to war with every day. So going into the Big Ten tournament, Ohio State was uh, ranked in number six seed. Um, most recently, about a week ago, knocking off Illinois, a higher seed. Um, and by the way, you were uh, part of the all-tournament team. Uh, 1.09 ERA in 19.1 innings pitched. But um, what what I want to talk about here is after that game, I believe, you were interviewed um, – on the Big Ten Network, and um, I quote you say, the Bucks are hot right now. How are the Bucks going to keep staying hot going in deeper and deeper into this postseason? Yeah, I mean, you know, we were playing well. Our, our offense was stepping up, and, you know, that Purdue game, they had to, they had to choose who they wanted to pitch to, and they, they chose who they thought was our weak link, and she, you know, cracked under the wall and had to walk off single. Should have been a walk-off grand slam, but it is what it is. About two feet short. Um, but you know, I think I think we all know from now on, like it only goes up, right? The the teams moving on are only going to get better. So we're not going to have those games most likely that are you know eight nothing games, ten nothing games, games where you can kind of take take your foot off the gas and kind of coast. So I think just continuing to have that mindset of like every single game it's Illinois, every single game it's Nebraska, every single game you know, from now on out, it's going to be teams that were selected. It's not just teams that got there. So um, I think just continuing to kind of keep our nose down and keep our focus within our circle and not let our circle get too big and worry about the outside um, outside expectations um, is going to be really key for our success. Absolutely. Absolutely. A hundred percent agree there. I know recently you um, tweeted as I'm pulling this up right now, um, yeah, it's deep in the Twitter. But anyways, you tweeted after you're done playing softball, you're trying to find a coaching gig. Any <laughs> luck there so far? Oh, man. Uh, yes and no. I don't know. I, I There's a lot going on at one time. And honestly, right now, I'm just so concerned with figuring out what we can do as Ohio State softball 2022. So um, kind of taking one step at a time and – you know, whatever the Lord has for me next is great. And we're just going to figure that out later on. Man, Lexi, like I said, I've, I've watched some of your highlights and some of your recent games. You've been dominating it in the circle for the Ohio State University. Um, I, obviously, college softball is, uh, for me, when I watch it, it seems so intense, so many, so much good competition and it just seems like, it, at least in my mind, and this could be different for any other teams around, that there's a huge bond when it comes to um, playing softball and your teammates around, obviously. And uh, sort of on a uh, sadder note, um, obviously, a couple weeks ago, um, JMU's catcher, uh, Lauren Burnett, tragically lost her life. And then you see... Uh, people tweeting different softball teams uh, tweeting about different ways they're honoring what happened to this local JMU um, softball catcher. Um, first and foremost, when you heard that news, um, what, 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 what was sort of your thoughts there? And did Ohio State do anything special to honor her life? Yeah, you know, as, as a female in this sport, and as, you know, a college student and as someone who knows that, you know, she has a lot before her, like it, it just, it was heartbreaking to hear that. And, um, you know, it really, 
we have heard so much about mental health and athletes recently. And, you know, Harry Miller from Ohio State, like he and him being so open with his journey. Um, and, you know, yeah, that one hit kind of close to home because it's Ohio State. But I think for it to happen in the softball community, it was a little bit different um, because, you know, she's from this general area. She's from, you know, she's from a good upbringing. She has, you know, she had good family. She played travel ball and, you know, for, for that news to break and for, you know, the softball community to really show like, Hey, you know, this isn't just about James Madison. This isn't just about the CAA. Like this is about us all together, all levels, D1, you know, JUCOs, like everyone, 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 you know, bought in. And, you know, I think, I think we're trying to change the narrative of, you know, Hey, athletes struggle too. I struggle too. Like we have, we have great resources here at Ohio State that I'm super thankful for, but you know, that doesn't mean that every day is a walk in the park. And, you know, so it's been great to see, you know, the outpouring of support, you know, we were, we had a moment of silence um, that following weekend after we had heard the news and we all wore purple um, and uh, green ribbon in our hair. And I think that's been a very, very common trend um, that we've seen a lot of green hair ribbons and hair bows, which is awesome. You know, that's a great thing to put out there with it being Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, but, you know, until we get to the functional problem of how can we better serve these athletes and these people and how can we continue to provide them with support and how can we continue to change change the narrative of mental health? Like that's when changes are going to be made. That's when these stories aren't going to be stories anymore. That's when this is going to be a solution. We're going to have solutions and not just you know, support. Support's great, but we need solutions. And, you know, it's a, it's a whole whirlwind. Obviously there's a million different perspectives, um, you know, but I think just normalizing it is the first, first step. And then, um, you know, also trying to get everyone on board and not just people who are supportive of mental health. Um, I know for me, I tweeted something a couple months ago. I went through, uh, I had a panic attack during a game. I like made it known and I put my story out there after Henry Miller because I just thought it was worthwhile to know and I got a lot of lot a lot of great feedback but there was one and I'll remember it because that's what we do we always remember the one and it was just a random man you know behind a Twitter screen and his comment to me was I don't like where this is going like what does that even mean how is that like for me like thankfully I'm in a stable headspace where that wasn't effective to me but if I wasn't what would that do to me so I think like taking like it would be the same thing if I had a torn ACL and people would see that people would see a brace on my leg but just because people struggle in their head and their brain like just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there so um yeah I, I just think like making it more normal and making it a part of our normal conversations and not so much like this big secret that you have to be shameful of is is going to be something that uh we can really change the story of yeah, very well said there, because I, I, I mean, any sort of college athlete, um, the, I mean, you're still in school, you still have classwork, plus you're playing. And uh, I, I mean, for you, Lexi, it must be a lot to manage. But uh, I mean, having that positive headspace and having the conversation, making it a topic of conversation must help a lot instead of just hiding it, like you said. Yeah, absolutely. It does. And, and, you know, yes, athletes are put on the spot. So I think that's why it's seen a lot more, but you don't have to be a college athlete to have these problems. Like these are everyday problems that people everywhere struggle with. So, you know, it's not like just because you're not an athlete doesn't mean you can't struggle with this. And, and still, you know, deserve support. Like you still deserve that help. You still deserve that space and you still deserve like to be supported the same way that us athletes want to be supported too. Absolutely. Um, yeah, but um, very great stuff. Um, once again, Lexi Hanley, graduate pitcher for the Ohio State University. They're getting set for the Knoxville Regional. Um, some pretty good competition, but we will be watching you along the way, um, Lexi. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Are, uh, how excited are you to get down there and uh, pitch in the circle? Yeah, I'm super excited. Um, you know, the Vols are a great team. We have a really, really powerful region. Um, Campbell, Oregon State, um, OSU, obviously, you know, I think it's a pretty packed, uh, packed regional. But, um, you know, I'm excited to see what we can do. And, 
Um, you know, obviously the Bulls have a very rich history with uh, Monica Abbott and the circle and, um, you know, their legendary coaching staff, but um, I'm just excited. I'm really excited. I love softball. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So in these sort of postseason type of things, is there is there a specific pregame routine you go through that just locks you in, you drain everything out, and you're like, I'm ready to go out and throw some strikes here? Um, like, I think softball players are all, like, superstitious in their own ways. So, like, I, my hair is always braided the same way and it's always braided on the bus by Regan, who's one of my friends, one of our freshmen. She's awesome. Um, I wear the same earrings, same necklaces, same bracelets. So I guess like that kind of stuff, like my makeup's always done the same way. Like when you feel the part, then you are the part type of deal. Um, so I guess that's kind of like my like lock in. Um, but I've also tried to like not be too focused on that because if things do go wrong, if God forbid my eyeliner runs out or if I lose an earring, like, I don't want that to, you know, set me off or to make me freak out or anything. Um, so I don't know, like I, I'm at my same workout or, uh, pregame routines and everything, but, um, that's all just for my feel good type of stuff. So, um, I'm not super, super into superstitious, uh, mannerisms. Absolutely. Uh, once again, big thanks to our sponsors. Once again, PM plus reserves, Shenandoah Primitives, Dr. Dave Leadership Corporation, and Mark Francis with Icon Real Estate. Once again, none of these would be possible without our sponsor support. So thank you again. Once again, Lexi Hanley, you can find her on Twitter at Lexi Hanley, graduate pitcher for The Ohio State University, getting set for the Knoxville Regional. Lexi will be watching you along the way. Um, looking forward to seeing how you and the rest of the Ohio State softball team does. It's been a blast chatting it up with you, and uh, we appreciate your time today. Yeah, thank you so much. And, um, yeah, follow us along to see the rest of our journey. And if there's any coaches out there looking for an assistant coach, uh, get in my DMs or something like that. Cause I'm <laughs> yeah, for sure. Hey, Lexi, just one more thing. You got to throw one strikeout for us here on the podcast. One strikeout? Yeah. What do, what do I get? Three pitches? No, just dedicate one strikeout to the podcast. Oh, one strikeout to uh, the Kirby podcast. Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Good luck to you, Lexi. Until next time, we say so long and peace out.